Let's look at math, grade 4, module 3, lesson 26, multi-digit multiplication and division, topic G, division of thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. We're going to begin with the ones. We're going to divide nine ones into three groups. And we're going to do this using our place value chart. I'm going to show nine ones. And then I'm going to divide these up into three groups down here at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is, since I know I have three groups, I'm going to cross out three at a time. And then I'm going to put those in two groups. And these groups are going to be made in rows. Then I'll cross out the next three. And I'll put them in the groups. And then I'll cross out the last three. And I'll put those three into groups. So, nine ones divided into three groups would equal three ones. I have three ones in this group, three ones in this group, three ones in this group. Now let's do this with nine tens, which is 90. 90 is equal to nine tens. What I can do is the same thinking that I used to divide nine ones into three groups, I can divide nine tens into three groups. I can just think of this as being nine tens. And then my answer, instead of having three ones, which is what I had here, my answer is going to be three tens. Now three tens we know is equal to 30. Let's think about that again. What if I had nine hundreds divided into three groups? I can use the same process that I just did. I have three groups, so I'm going to put them in three at a time. I'm going to put one in this group, one in this group, one in this group. Then I'll cross out the next three because I'm, they're not going to be in the hundreds anymore. They're going to be in groups. And I'm going to put them in this group. And then I'll cross out my last three. And I'm going to move those into the groups. So just as before, when I had nine ones, and I divided it into three groups, and then I thought about it as nine tens, I ended up with 30 because I had three tens in each group. Now I have hundreds that I'm dividing. I have nine hundreds, dividing them into three groups, I get three hundreds in each group. And if I were doing 9,000, it really wouldn't be any different other than I, instead of dividing hundreds, this time I would be dividing thousands. So I could use the same process that I used before. So 900 divided into three groups, I would think this way. And I would see that in each group I have three hundreds. If I'm dividing nine thousands into three groups, I would see that I have three thousands in each group. Let's think about 350 divided by 5. I'm representing that I have 350. I have three hundreds and five tens. Now, if I want to divide that into five groups, I'm going to start with my hundreds. But I don't have five hundreds, so I can't put one hundred in each group. So I'm going to have to unbundle this group of hundreds. I'm going to have to decompose this group of a hundred. So instead, I'm going to draw a line through it, and I'm going to have an arrow pointing to my tens. So instead of having one hundred here, I'm going to trade that in for tens. So I need to know how many tens are in a hundred. I can count by ten, or I can think about how ten times ten is one hundred. So I have ten 
tens, and here they are. These are my ten tens that I'm trading in for this hundred. I'm also going to do that with this hundred. I'm going to draw a line through that one and I'm going to trade it in for ten tens. And then I'm going to do it for my last hundred, for this hundred. I'm going to draw a line through it and I'm going to trade it in for ten tens. So now, instead of having three hundreds, I have ten, twenty, thirty, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. I have 35 tens. So now if I want to divide 35 tens into five groups, I can do that. I can, I'm going to draw a line through five at a time. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to take those five and I'm going to put them in groups. One, two, three, four, five. And my groups are going to be in rows. Actually, I'm going to spread those out a little bit more so we can see them better. Okay, so now I'm going to draw a line through the next five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I will distribute those into my groups. And I will continue this process until I basically run out of tens to move into my groups. Now each time I go and draw a line through five tens. Then I come and draw my those five tens and I put them into their groups. And remember this is a group. A row is a group. Looks like I have to do it again. So I will do it again. And I have one more time I think. One two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. So now, in each group, so this is a group, in each group, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tens. So when I divided, 350 by 5. I had to regroup, I had to unbundle, or I had to decompose the hundreds into tens. I ended up with 35 tens. And then I divided the 35 tens into five groups, and I got seven in each group. Now if I look up here, I can see that I have 35 tens. So when I look at 350, I can think, okay, that's 35 tens. And then I can divide 35 tens into five groups. I know that five times seven equals 35. And what this is showing me is that five times seven tens is equal to 35 tens. And 35 tens is 350. So let's take a look at this idea and divide 3,500 by 5. Well, just as I had before, I had 350. Now, these are going to shift into the thousands place because I have three thousands. So here are my three thousands. Here are my five hundreds. 
Now the same process that I used before of unbundling or regrouping or decomposing those hundreds, now I decompose the thousands. And when I divide them up into their groups, I still have seven in each group. But this time I don't have seven tens in this group. I have seven hundreds. So 3,500 divided by five would be seven hundreds. And if I had, if these were going to be representing this, then what I would be showing is that I have three tens and five ones that I had to regroup or decompose and turn into 35 ones, which I then distributed into my five groups, and I still end up with seven in each group. Let's take a look at this problem. It says the hometown hotel has a total of 480 guest rooms. That is six times as many rooms as the Traveler's Hotel down the street. How many rooms are there in the Traveler's Hotel? All right, we're going to solve this problem using a tape diagram. <clears throat> Essentially, a tape diagram is a rectangle that helps us break down a word problem. So we're going to use this rectangle to help us. This rectangle is going to represent the hometown hotel. So what do I know about the hometown hotel? Well, it told me that the hometown hotel has 480 rooms. So my whole is going to be 480. So I'm going to show 480, and that 480 represents this total amount. The whole rectangle is 480. It also says that the Traveler's Hotel down the street, that 480 is six times the number of rooms that the Traveler's Hotel has. So what I actually have to do is I'm going to have to separate 480 into six parts. And I do that because the Traveler's Hotel is going to be just one of those parts because it'll take six of these to make 480. So I separated the rectangle into six parts and then I can see about how big the Traveler's Rectangle needed to be. So now we need to know how much is each one of these parts. Well, what I'm really doing is I'm thinking about 480 being equaled to six times an amount. So six times, so whatever this is, one, two, three, four, five, six times will give me 480. I can think about 480 being 48 tens. So 48 tens would be equal to six times something. Six times something equals 48. Six times eight equals 48. So six times eight tens would equal 480. So each small rectangle is going to represent eight tens. And if I have eight tens six times, I have 480 or 48 tens. So the Traveler's Hotel is equal to eight tens. And eight tens is equal to 80. So how many rooms are there in the Traveler's Hotel? There are 80 rooms in the Traveler's Hotel. All right, that's going to wrap things up for Lesson 26, where we've been working on dividing multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000 by single digits. If you want a collection of the videos that I'm making, you can go to tinyurl.com slash lpssmath and the number 4. And also, um, when you go there, you can click on the topic and click on the lesson that you need. We also have resources at lpssonline.com. Hover over Parent Command Center, scroll down to Math Resources. Click on the grade level you want. In this case, we're working on fourth grade. 
and you can get to this page which has our topic newsletters and we were working on topic F but now we're working on topic G and those newsletters can really help you um, with understanding what we're trying to get done with math.